Now, poetry has existed for over 4,000 years, and it has been used by different people for different purposes. However, blacks have always used poetry as a tool for ensuring that they express their emotions, share their ideas, and also advocate for their rights. This can be demonstrated by many black poets that existed before and still continue to exist today. So in today's video, I want us to share some clips here of ladies who are using poetry to fight for the rights of the black person and expose white privilege as it has been in the United States. So let's watch this, then come back and share some thoughts together. This poem is inspired by a Facebook post where I asked black people, if you could write a letter to white people, what would you say? Dear white people, I don't even know where to start. In between my busy schedule comprised entirely of surviving white America, there is simply no time to write letters. Besides, any letter I write will most likely bring tears to your eyes, and I, for one, have had my fill of white tears. There are days I think you aren't worth my ink, that your whiteness is draining me of too much energy. Can't give you a taste of the tea for fear you'll colonize the whole kitchen. But today, I am too angry to remain silent. Dear white people, stop making everything about you and how uncomfortable you are. I honestly don't give a flying fuck about your comfort level. You have made my very existence an exercise in discomfort. It is time for you to make room at the table. Better yet, go sit in the living room. I am not here to coddle your feelings, not here for your amusement. No, you cannot touch my hair. This isn't a damn petting zoo. And stop coming into my office asking for the managers if you aren't already looking at one. Dear white people, dear white people, stop telling me about this colorblind society you allegedly live in. Telling me you don't see race is the racist drivel I hope you choke on. Telling me you respect me but don't see my color is like saying you have to pretend I'm not black in order to respect me. But let me assure you, I am black, though there are plenty of things I'm not, like your sassy black friend stop saying, hey girl, when you see me. You ain't that slick. I hear the way you talk to Becky and Steve every day. You sound like vacation on Martha's Vineyard where you spent summers waiting in the bitter blue of the Atlantic. How I wish my toes could touch the ocean without stepping on the bones of my ancestors. Dear white teachers, why don't I know who my ancestors are? Why is only one part of my history important enough to teach? And for the love of God, stop swiveling your heads every time slavery is mentioned. Newsflash, I wasn't there. And just because I'm the only black person in this class doesn't mean you can ask me to speak on behalf of my race. I believe you really care about the opinion of black students when you stop shutting down conversations because I call a white student racist. Dear white people, why do you hate being called racist more than you hate racism? Why do you listen to Tim Wise over actual black people about the black experience? Dear white people, stop using black on black crime as a reason we shouldn't be outraged by the murder of black people by white cops. If a black person kills a black person, they will go to jail, and that is what we call justice. If a white cop kills a black person, they will get paid leave, and that is what we call justice. Apparently, justice is when a black body dies. Dear white people, Every time we've written white people, we've written it in lowercase because we are tired of you capitalizing on our pain. We are angry and raw and tired and angry and raw and tired and tired and tired, but we will not rest because we know the future belongs to those who prepare for it. And you have been getting us ready for centuries. A man his size cries for his mama. A man his size. And as he lies on the ground face down, the big, heavy, white knee presses deep into his neck. A man his size cries for his mama. I'm going to die, mama. I can't breathe. Please let me be, sir. I, I can't breathe. Please give me some release, he pleads. A man his size cries for his mama in the gutter. Beneath the big, white man beneath the uniform beneath the centuries beneath the knee beneath that racist hierarchy he cries out for his mama george cried out for his mama a big beautiful strong black man cried out for his mama laid out in the street he cried he tried and he died trying and the people now cry no more lies no more shall die the people cry for all the lives and all the cries out to mothers in the gutters before they died. Because black lives matter. 
the fight is on. The protests begun because too many sons have gone too soon. Too many sons sacrifice lost lives. No badges of honour to pin on lapels, just nasty labels that increase the fear. And we are here. We are feared because when we fear, we cry tears that can be wiped away easily. We sleep soundly because we don't need to fight for what's right. We don't need to stay home at night. We can walk where we like, see who we please, do as we need without heed because we are white. That is privilege. We will never know what it is like to go in fear every day, thinking about the ways we move, talk, say anything. Imagine a world where there is no freedom to move. Being alone is suspicious. Imagine having to prove who you are, where you're going, why you're going there. As though the questioner even cares, as though he doesn't want to let you know who is boss and toss the book at you. Imagine a crime you didn't commit, but taking the blame as you're hit with batons. Imagine being hit with batons and being grateful you weren't shot. Imagine begging for your life in a parking lot. Imagine all these things that just aren't right. We cannot imagine because we are white. We learned your French. Okay. We learned your English. We learned your Spanish. We learned your Dutch, your Portuguese, your German. You learned our nothing. You called us stupid. That's white privilege. And I'm sure it probably hurts for you to hear those two words, kind of like gunshots and explosions from those commissioned to protect you with whisking past your ears, what is white privilege? It is the only five decades of legal acknowledgement expected to correct 400 years of white transgression. It is crack versus cocaine. Blacks receiving almost 20% longer sentences for the same exact offenses of like, for instance, a black man without a record is less likely to get a job than a white felon world. Maybe it's because we're lazy and we don't work hard enough. Like, what the fuck, 400 years in the same field literally is an incredible resume builder. It is Katrina answering the government's prayers of eugenics, Dick Cheney going fishing the next day, Condoleezza on a shopping spree, Bush in San Diego, but Kanye is the one you call crazy because like, it only took the USA two days to get aid to Asia, but five for FEMA to get to Canal Street and Esplanade as the one black kid who beat the shit out of the odds, but only thanks to Sandra Bullock, Michelle Pfeiffer and the White Shadow, so now we all can make it. It is the only time Thousands of white people are cheering for the black kid to win it is in the stadium. It is you looking at me crazy if I told you to go back to Europe even though we didn't have a say. It is you all of a sudden having a problem with immigration like this isn't even your nation. How the hell do you discover some shit that wasn't even missing to begin with you Columbus our traditions? Had white girls twerking in high definition with multicolored hair and purple nails but it was ghetto when we did it. Oh, I'm, I'm making you uncomfortable. Try a cramped slave ship, but wait. Slavery is over now. It's just called the prison system because like you're not racist because you don't use the n-word But y'all use niggas every day. What is white privilege? It is the acceptance of bombs over Baghdad, but not over Boston. It is European history being taught as a major and African as an elective. It is learning about my people only 28 days like I'm not black every fucking second as every white boy. With the fuck my brains out, not because I'm pretty, but because I'm pretty for a black girl. It is people thinking that Africa is one nation. It is the waving of the Confederate flag like you didn't lose the battle and then telling us to get over slavery. It is people saying that black people destroyed neighborhoods, but forgetting that white people have destroyed continents. It is every time I bring up my plight, some white man has to tell me that I'm crazy, but it's kind enough to praise my English or say that we are all given the same opportunities, even though he has a family history of wealth. And I don't even know my family history at all is the justification of police brutality. Like, what did that person do? I'm sure it doesn't hurt as much when the victim doesn't look like you. It is people thinking that affirmative action is an unfair advantage instead of keeping the qualified from being unfairly disadvantaged or throwing out a qualified applicant because their name's out to African American is Newports imported into black communities where black boys exported for weed as big plastic asses that are called fat when we naturally have them. It is an Australian woman whose new classic of rap music it is everyone who hears this poem dismisses all this truth I just spit as reverse racism. That is white privilege. Thank you. Now, that is some good poetry there. Those ladies have really spoken their minds, and I think they have hit the point home. So I'm sure you're able to see that art can be used to help in advocating for some of the most important things in the society. 
we have known that black people love using art. Go to music, they are there. Go to poetry, they know how to use art to ensure that they express their feelings. In fact, the ancient times, we know that art was used as a tool of expression, as a tool of expressing your cultural diversity and cultural beliefs. We have seen drawings that depict the culture and behaviors of how people lived during colonial times or even the ancient times. Now, I did some little research to understand how poetry has been used over the times to really express the desire of black people and help them in championing for their goals that have been disenfranchised. So here is a little research that I did and here is what I found out. Black people in America have historically used poetry as a powerful medium to advocate for their rights, express resistance and call attention to the injustices they faced. Poetry became a way to preserve the African-American cultural identity, articulate their struggles, and demand equality in the face of systemic racism. During slavery, early African-American poets like Phyllis Wetley used their work to assert the humanity and intellect in a society that denied their full personhood. Her poetry subtly challenged the institution of slavery by expressing Christian ideals and the contradiction of enslaving fellow humans. In the 20th century, during the Harlem Renaissance, poets such as Langston Hughes and Clued McKay brought black voices to the forefront of American literature. Hughes's poems like Let America Be America Again questioned the American dream by highlighting the disparities between its promise and the realities black Americans faced. Cloud McKay, If We Must Die, written in response to race riots in 1919, is an impassioned call for dignity and resistance encapsulating the struggles against racial violence. So we are able to see how poets in the early periods used their poems to help in advocating their desires and even put the voice to some of the issues that were affecting black people within American system. The civil rights movement in the 1950s and 1960s further heightened the role of poetry as a tool for activism. Poets like Amiri Baraka and Maya Angelou used their verses to condemn racism and promote black pride. Angelou's seminal work, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, spoke to the resilience of the black community in the face of oppression, symbolizing the longing for freedom and equality. Baraka's politically charged poems addressed systemic inequalities and urged black people to fight for justice. In more contemporary times, poets like Audre Lorde and Nikki Giovanni continued the tradition of blending art with activism. Lorde's poetry, particularly her explorations of intersectionality, emphasized the importance of addressing not just racial but also gender and sexual oppression. Spoken word poetry, too, has become a powerful tool for modern black activists, with figures like Saul Williams and the rise of platforms such as Deaf Poetry Jam giving a voice to younger generations fighting for racial justice. Through the ages, black poetry in America has not only advocated for civil rights, but has also served as a cultural manifesto of endurance, self-expression, and defiance. So this sums up how poetry has been used over the years by black people to really express themselves and show what they are really about. We know that many people may downplay the role of poetry in the America that we see today, but most black people have had to really express themselves through different forms. We know that open expression was really suppressed. So they got new ways. They invented new ways to ensure that they were able to speak to themselves and also speak to the authorities that existed to them. You will understand that during the civil rights movement, it was very, very difficult for blacks to come out and speak openly about some issues that they believe are dear to them. So the best way to camouflage this information and pass it across to the authorities and even to the system that existed is that they were able to use art to express themselves and show that they needed to be free and be respected as a people. Tell me down in the comment section what you think about this. And if you're watching us for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and also share. Thank you, and may the good Lord bless you.
goodbye